In solving problem 2.1.13s, we're going to be trying to figure out how to finance a future purchase with an annuity, taking inflation into account. I'm also going to introduce the idea of an annuity due in this video. We have looked at annuities immediate to this point. All right, here we go. Chuck needs to purchase an item in 10 years. It costs 200 today, and the price is going to inflate at 4% per year. That's the assumed inflation rate. To finance the purchase, to save for it, Chuck deposits 20 into an account. Here's something different. At the beginning of each year, starting right away at time zero for six years, not the end of each year. That's why this can be thought of as an annuity due. I'm actually going to think of it as an annuity immediate, first, and then I will talk about what an annuity due is. He deposits an additional X at the beginning of years 4, 5, and 6 to meet his goal. The effective annual interest rate is 10%. Calculate X. How much should he deposit at the beginning of years 4, 5, and 6? Draw a number line. Here's time 0. I think I better put all 10 years on this. Time one, two, three, etc. All right, be careful. Um, so let's see, 20 gets deposited right away at the beginning of the first year. Doing that each year for six years. Here's the second one, here's the third, here's the fourth, here's the fifth, here's the sixth one. At time five, five years from today, <clears throat> excuse me, at the beginning of the sixth year, that's his last deposit of 20. And then X is deposited at the beginning of years four, five, and six. Year four starts at time three. Year five starts at time four, and year six starts at time six. We want the, the future value of all these things to equal the inflated price after 10 years. What is the inflated price? inflated price if inflation is 4% per year we'll take 200 times 1.04 to the 10th power and that will be the amount that Chuck needs to save for 1.04 to the 10th is about 1.48 times 200 Chuck needs, needs to save about 296.05. Let's carry more decimals. 296.048857. All right, that's what, again, Chuck needs to save for that amount after 10 years. All right, let's solve for X. Initially thinking of things in terms of annuity immediates as we have done. I've said you can think of annuity as immediate as a series of, in this case, six payments if we focus on the 20s where you evaluate the future value immediately after the last payment. You could call this S sub 6. It's with a 10% interest rate. Um, and we are depositing 20 instead of 1, so I multiply it by 20. This will be the future value at time 5 of this series of 6 payments, thought of as an annuity immediate. So it's going to be 20 times 1.1 to the 6th minus 1 over 0.1. Let's see what that is. 1.1 to the 6th power minus 1 divide by 0.1 times 20. We get a future value of 154.3122. That's going to need to get pushed forward in time another five years, according to the 10% interest rate. So this time, let's go ahead and do that right away. So I'm going to multiply that by 1.1 to the fifth power. Let me go ahead and store this, store it in, say, register 0. 1.1 to the fifth power is this. Multiply it by what I just stored in register 0. 248.52.5213412 is the future value of the 20s at time 10. 
What about the x's? At time 5, again, if I think in terms of annuity immediates, evaluate that future value immediately after the last deposit. It's th uh, three payments, still a 0.1 interest rate, but those payments are of x amount. So that future value will be this, 1.1 the third power minus 1 divide by 0 0.1 3.31 times x but once again that needs to get promoted another five years multiply that by 1.1 to the fifth again 1.1 to the fifth power again is this times 3.31 at time 10, we have 5.3307881x. This plus this needs to be the amount that you need to pay for the item, the 296.048857. That's going to allow us to solve for x. Let me just go ahead and, and do it with the calculator here. We are going to need to take there we go. We're going to need to take um, subtract 248.5213472 from both sides. So let me type in 296.048857. I'm using more decimals than I need, but I'm just playing it safe. Minus 248.5213472. And then we need to, to divide by 5.33 to solve for x. Divide by 5.3307881. The answer for x is 8.92. That is the answer to the problem. Now, what about thinking of this in terms of an annuity due? How is it different? Well, I've said that for, let's focus on the 20s here. For a series of six payments of 20 equally spaced, the future value immediately after the last payment for that income stream would be 20 times the future value of a payment of one, six times that be um, evaluated immediately after the last payment. And I've said you can also think of annuity immediates in terms of, okay, if you're, if you're starting at time zero, those payments are at the end of the years. If, on the other hand, you're starting at time zero and you think of those payments as being the, the beginning of the years, it turns out you can find the future value one year after the last deposit and you call that an annuity due instead of an annuity immediate and the symbol for that future value is S6.1 in this case double dot and that's with a payment of 1 so I also need to multiply by 20. S6 double dot would be the future value of an annuity due one year after the last payment so in this case at time 6. The formula for that is similar to the formula for annuity immediate. You still take 1 plus i to the n power, which is 6 power in this case, and this is going to be a 1.1. Subtract 1, but you divide by something different. You don't, don't divide by i, you divide by d, where d is the discount rate. How do you find d from i? Recall that um, d is 1 minus v, we have talked about d before, where v is the discount factor, and v is 1 plus i to the negative 1 power. So if i is 10% as it is here, d is going to be 1 minus 1 over 1.1, 1 .1. the reciprocal of 1.1 is 0 0.90 repeating, Subtract that from 1, d is 0 0.09 repeating. Let's go ahead and use that. I'll go ahead and store it in register 0. Let's use it back up here. Remember, i is, one point, is, is point 0.1, so I'd have 1.1 to the 6th power minus 1 divide by what's stored in register 0 that is the value of this or this 
multiply it by 20, and we get the future value at times 6 of that series of payments of 620s is about 169.743. You could have, you, we could have solved the problem using this information. We could, for example, promote that in time another four years. Let me store it first. Store and register zero. In other words, multiply by 1.1 to the fourth. 1.1 to the fourth power is this. If you multiply that by what's in register zero now, that future value of the annuity due, you get 248.52, which is the exact same thing we got right here when we thought of it in terms of annuity immediate. So that's a little introduction to the idea of an annuity due. Um, we will certainly come back to this idea in future videos. It's, it's a matter of just thinking about it in a slightly different way and using a different formula, but they are equivalent approaches.